Hi everyone, Shalom Aleichem. Uh, the great Rav and Rosh Hashiva, Rav Shimshim Pinka Zatzal, was an unbelievable balavoda. He lit the entire city of Ofakim on fire with love of God, with Ruchnius and Avodas Hashem, and his farmer learned the world over. One time there was, a, there was an Avreich, uh, a Kohl student in uh, one of Rav Pinka's institutions who was suffering terribly from tooth pain. And um, he kind of he tried to suck it up and, uh, and not make a big deal about it. No one really knew. And, but his wife just saw how difficult it was for him. Only his wife said she couldn't take it anymore. Went to her pinkus and said, he's just in so much pain. He, he, he's having a hard time sleeping. He's having a hard time eating. He's just, uh, he's miserable. Is there something that you can do? Pincus, who himself lived a very modest life, of a man of, of very limited means in, in, terms of, uh, in terms of finances, said, give me a few minutes. He went to his house, took all of the money that he could find in the house, emptied his account, came back to the woman with an envelope of cash, and said, this is for your husband's dental care. He went and called the dentist and found a connection, someone who was an oral surgeon, took care of all the details and made all the arrangements for the young man to be able to have his terrible pain taken care of. One of the Talmidim, one of the friends in the Kolol heard about it and, and later came to his Rebbe, to Rav Pinkus, and said, I, I mean, it, it's an amazing thing, it's a beautiful chesed, it's a beautiful way of, of, of helping a person, but at Kedekach, meaning isn't there, isn't there a limit? Don't we know that there's a, that we know there's a mitzvah of giving maser, or giving 10%, a person can give 15%, but we know that there's an upper limit that the Torah instructs us that we can't give more than 20% chomesh, because at a certain point we'll, we'll, we'll bleed our own resources, we won't be able to give further, and won't be able to sustain ourselves. The Torah has limitations. He asked Rav Pinkus, like, I don't know, maybe you want to, is this, like, is this the way, is this the way we're supposed to do it? Rav Pinkus said, of course there's halacha, and of course there's limitation, of course there's boundaries, of course there's a way that Chazal guide us to do things to give and to receive in a way which is uh, boundary. He said, but tell me, but tell me, if this was my son and he couldn't sleep, if this was my own son and he couldn't eat, if this was my own son and he was in terrible pain and agony crying out, I wouldn't empty my account and do everything possible? I wouldn't give everything? What's the difference if it's somebody else's son, if it's my son, we're all the Rebona Shalom's children? Now, for, for someone living with that mentality, with that consciousness of understanding that Abba that we are all children of the Rebona Shalom, that all of Kal Yisrael are one family, that we're all connected in such a way, Ahava Mekalkel Ashura, all bets are off. All the, all the rules and limitations fall away. For our own flesh and blood, for our own family, we'll do anything. These are days where our focus, where the lens is very much zooming in on where we as a community, as a nation, have fallen short in our taking responsibility for others, in our Havas Israel, in our stepping up to the plate and going beyond to do for other people. It's, in fact, uh, we all know, we've all been raised with this consciousness our entire life. The reason why we are in exile, the reason why we don't have a base on Mikdash is just quite simply because of Sinas Chinam, because of our lack of, of love and concern and taking care of one another, of seeing one another through the prism, through the lens of Vahafta Recha Kamulcha, of loving others and ensuring their well-being as we would want our own and our own families. The Kajan Magid explains that the destruction of the Temple, Churban Beis HaMikdash, was not not a punishment. It wasn't like we did something wrong and Hashem, the Tati, the angry father, came and punished us and uh, took away our temple and burnt it to the ground. Says, That's not what it is. Imagine if, 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 the, if the stove is lit and we put our hand into fire. God forbid, it shouldn't happen. We'd get burned. Fire burns. It's not a punishment that the fire burns and that we get hurt from it. It's a reality. It's a metzius in the world. When one puts their hand into fire, one burns. Without a Havas Yisrael, without love and care and concern and taking responsibility for one another, without feeling the pain and joy of another, without striving and aspiring to see one another as siblings in the same family, as members of the same mishpacha, with one Father who loves us in heaven, then, then the temple has no place to be. There's no oxygen. It's extinguished. It's not a punishment. It, it's a reality. It's a repercussion. It's just what it is. A world without Ahavas Yisrael, a world that's not ablaze with the love of Am Yisrael, is a world which can't sustain the Beis HaMikdash. I'm grateful in our entire community, all of us are grateful to the extraordinary efforts of Eilecha for providing an opportunity to have a little bit of a, a reminder of how important it is for us to go the extra mile from one another. Hashem should help that our hearts should be filled with love of Hashem, love for Am Yisrael, and with this, re, with this, with this reawakening of a Havas Yisrael during these days, with this, with this, this sense of, of taking a, a, a obligation uh, for one another and taking responsibility for one another, in Hashem, there'll be no more pain, no more dental pain, no more pain in Nefesh and in Guf, and God willing, we'll see the rebuilding of the base of Mikdash, Bekar of Mamish.